Welcome to Escaping Purgatory, a podcast where we rewatch Supernatural and talk it through in the hopes we can finally escape this show. Join us each week and leave comments on upcoming episodes, and together we can escape Supernatural Purgatory. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> we made it! We made it to the like. Okay, I don't think this is controversial, yeah. but is this the best filler episode of Supernatural? Yeah, one hundred percent it is. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's best. I I, I still enjoy but, watching it, but I do. But go on. There is also Hunter Hurakai. No, this is better. One hundred percent. You think so? Yeah, I do. Oh, I don't know. I think it's I love the Looney Tunes, so I think that's <laughs> like that calls to me more. But then I guess the concept of this is just timeless. Yeah. So, I yes. I watched so, I watched yeah. this episode while doing possibly like the nerdiest thing and it was <laughs> i was re bedazzling my supernatural leather jacket hell yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah so it was good i was fully immersed in the fan experience while I was watching this yeah. <laughs> i mean you're basically doing what you would have done when it originally came out in 20 to uh 2011 a- absolutely i actually think i'm cooler now though <laughs> <laughs> yeah me too yeah. me too i yeah. think so too yeah. yeah oh i yes this episode is great um they were saying before we recorded that like i f- i have a hard time watching um secondhand embarrassment like humor yeah. mm-hmm. so like things like mr bean i can't i can't watch it even though it's <laughs> Though it is funny, yeah, I find it like really difficult. So I kept pausing it because I was just like, "Oh no, the cringe, the cringe, the second hand, like oh, like hide me away." Yeah, um, but it was, it's so good, so much belly laughing, like yeah. it makes no like this is purely filler. There is nothing to add to this, and like, yeah, they they were they were put through this whole ordeal for nothing. I think it was definitely it was Balthazar's idea. Yes, and it's probably revenge for the like crispy wings thing. <laughs> oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, plot wise, it was such an excuse to do this like stupid episode. I'm not mad at it at all because no. the effect was very good. Um, I don't think that like. I think, to be fair, I think the whole weapons locker thing does come up again, to be fair. They did do, like, a filler sandwich, like, the beginning and the end for someone. Yeah. Something. <laughs> <laughs> the middle was not anything, but, like, fine. Yeah. P- people talk about this episode. Like, the last time I watched this episode was when I was showing it to a group of, of, of non-supernatural fans to try and persuade them. <laughs> to watch the show and we'd all been drinking and we all thought it was hilarious like (laughs) i mean it is (laughs) yeah but the problem is is like showing it to non-supernatural fans is you basically just have to sit through the episode like explain the context and you're like no but that's their actor (laughs) those are are the actors they're pretending to be themselves like it's so funny it's and it's so stupid and it should only be done with alcohol (laughs) yes yeah 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 you're right that there, there needs to be a couple of drinks in you <laughs> <laughs> well what did dean call it he calls it uh oh hero's hu- helper there you go oh, yeah that, yeah yeah <laughs> uh, horrendous yeah i think that's the last time i watched this episode was doing that and i think i've done that exact scenario about three or four times in my life where I'm like showing this episode. I usually did this one and then when it came out, because obviously it's quite a later series, like Scooby Natural actually, talking about good filler mm-hmm. episodes to be fair. Um, yeah, yeah. I usually show people um, and there's always another one. I always have to like pick a third. <laughs> it's like change, I think Changing Channels is probably another one, right? Yes, Changing Channels, precisely. So that's the like trio of like this mm-hmm. is why you should watch supernatural and then but the series is nothing like this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's nothing like these actual episodes these are the good ones like the funny ones 
You kind of have to get through everything else, though. Because what you're kind of asking me to do is, like, fall in love with these characters. Like, look how funny they are. Like, fall in love with them so you'll watch the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So you watch, like, last week's episode or last time's episode yeah. or the episode before that where they're just kind of, like, mediocre and not particularly going anywhere. Because I do know people, like, in real life who are just starting to watch Supernatural because people are looking for, like, TV shows to watch in this day and age. And, of course, mm-hmm. I always recommend Supernatural. Um, me too. And like, I had had to think what was like peak experience. It's like, okay, but you can't watch Supernatural without like making a Tumblr account. (laughs) 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 They go hand in hand. You can't watch Supernatural without the Supernatural website. Um, You probably need to listen to this 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 podcast, including ours, of course. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Not really. I don't usually recommend (laughs) to people I know. Um, (laughs) And then. And I was trying to think, like, how do you watch Supernatural in, like, this day and age? Um, and that, like, yeah, I think you do need to be online. I think it helps. I think it helps yeah. with the brain. It, does. it yeah. does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're going to be one of those people that will, like, watch a season in, like, three, like two to three days. Like, you've got, like, I don't know, you're, you're down with the flu or something. <laughs> peak. Peak experience. Just watch. Just, I like, don't yeah. stop watching it. You just have to, you just have to push through, like, the 15 seasons. <laughs> And then come back and talk to me about it because, like, exactly, I can't tell you anything that happens until you've you've, no, you've experienced. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. What other show is really like this that you have to like just tell people to hunker down and get through it? <laughs> just, get, just get three bugs. Once you're through bugs, like it's like hitting the wall in a marathon. Like once you're through bugs, yeah. it's all, it's all, from here it's plain, plain sailing most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, but I I really enjoy this. I I still Me love too. this episode. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. <laughs> nope. No, um, even like coming back to it, you know, for its time or anything like that. Um, of, well, there is kind of one kind of weird thing obviously like yes sam and jen shouldn't really happen oh <laughs> you're so right i did when i was watching this i was like wait are we okay with this are we okay with this i don't think, I don't think I, we're i'm okay. not sure we're okay yeah, with this consensual? because it's not really her yeah. yeah no you're right <laughs> that is the like yeah that should not no that shouldn't have happened that's wild no. to think about. <laughs> Imagine if your like, like partner had just been replaced with their doppelganger. That happens in a lot of TV shows. That happened in the boys does, as well. Yeah. Oh, spoilers, but fine. Um, yeah, it's been out yeah, a long true. time now. Um, yeah, also a weird situation. Crip- At least they yeah. addressed it in that. <laughs> I was about to ask Kripke what was like what was going on, but I realised he didn't write this episode or have any involvement in it other than dying on screen. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so before we go any further yes. we are talking about 615 the french mistake written by your boy, boy. Ben <laughs> yes. and directed by charles beeson he does such a good job he, like yeah. he's a great yeah great director he, yeah, he does really a lot good. of supernatural episodes and i feel like it was it was good to have someone familiar with them on this one mm-hmm to like get the yeah. nuance of like why this is funny yeah. exactly yeah and um, so when so like amy i've shown this episode to various different people mm-hmm. and like sitting down i was like there's no need for me to watch this i'm literally watching this because i love this episode yeah. and like i just want to watch it again um but in doing so i was like wait a minute like obviously we all know robert singer right yeah the guy behind the camera like directing this episode yeah but then i was like surely the other people on this set are real people because obviously there was cliff mm-hmm. in the car which at the time uh like i i can't remember the last time i watched this episode but it has been a while mm-hmm. like we all know cliff now yeah he's basically famous now too <laughs> uh along with the boys um like i didn't recognize the director of photography mm-hmm. the first the first ad was in it too one of the producers was in it i say in it they're like actor counterparts yes um <laughs> and like i didn't catch that it was sarah gamble and like the things that she says about oh, yeah. like cryptic left that was so good that was so good and like 
it was just yeah so um and amy was going through some of the trivia beforehand yes. and you said that the stunt doubles yes that take them off are the real stunt doubles in the show yeah like their respective ones as well so like jared's stunt double pulls him away and like jensen's pulls him away like yeah there's there's loads of little moments like that in this i don't think we can all of cover all of them in this episode i know we're gonna miss a mm-hmm. million out um yeah but it's worth going through with like a fine tooth comb kind of thing and like picking all those out because it was this was so meta like there's just so many little details about like how the mm-hmm. show runs and like obviously it's not a true reflection of the show at all no no th- like this is this is a um is it is it like a negative caricature of tv yeah exactly um yeah but like they obviously it's also obviously made by someone who like loves the show like Ben Edlund wrote this. He obviously loves the show and wants to like show yeah. off kind of how they work behind the scenes and how mm-hmm. it was good. Like, and just the there's just some surreal stupid stuff in here as well. Like, mm-hmm. they, like why did you make those details as well? They, like just making fun of people <laughs> in a in a kind of nice way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There there was one thing mm-hmm. that I kind of wish that they had done. Yeah. And I, I understand why they didn't, because they've already sort of pointed out that like Jensen was wearing makeup and that the young parlor wasn't real yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Um, I kind of wish that like they had to dress as themselves, like as in Jared and Jensen, because obviously they left they left set in Sam and Dean's yeah. outfits. Yeah. But like being stopped by makeup again, being like, hey, where are you going? Like, you know, you have like you have to leave this here. And like, you know how that because their um shirts and stuff their sleeves are cut off yes. so that they don't get o- overly oh, hot yeah. so when they take their jackets off they can be like why is why is my sleeve missing <laughs> that would have actually been really funny though to be fair um i think it it's also a nod to the fact that i think they have both said that they've just taken clothes that from set because like they fit them and they're like Probably, yeah i'm fine yeah. we'll just wear this <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah, but that makes sense that could have been fun i i quite like that to see them like dress in like their street clothes um mm-hmm yeah it's also like interesting how it's not at all close to their like actual lives like they kept it separate enough from uh, which yeah. to be fair like a good idea i feel <laughs> i feel so i do i kind of remember some of the like uh convention questions around this mm-hmm. episode and they're basically like well our lives are like really bo-, at the time anyway mm-hmm. they said that their lives are so boring that they didn't feel like it was a good idea for them to just act like them yeah and that's how like this kind of came about and it kind of makes sense like i don't i don't know if i would have wanted to see jensen ackles on screen <laughs> that's you know? but yeah i know what you mean like yeah because like <laughs> yeah i know what you mean because they're, they're playing like, a, like you said they're playing like a caricature of daytime tv stars right mm-hmm. so that's why it's like the, what everyone thinks their lives are like so like their huge house yeah. and um mm-hmm. the gala the, the main actress not talk yeah. yeah the main actress not talking to each other yeah like the power struggles um, and stuff yeah mm-hmm like the whole executives yeah. about not caring that they might be on drugs like that was so <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> like just we'll we'll pander to them so that they stay yeah kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah i think i i like i like the tone it took where like you kind of you obviously know that there's not that early in their lives but like it's a good enough caricature yeah. um to make it kind of feel realistic it mm-hmm. there is also like a good comparison for this would be that film that like misha shot like the behind the scenes one. Did you ever watch that? It must be somewhere in the DVDs where they do like a fake behind, like they take a like a fan on like a fake tour around the set. I kind of remember it, but I don't like not clearly. <laughs> but they do again like caricatures of all of their like actual characters that like actually what like kind of the actors are like. So like Jensen's slightly afraid of Jared and like avoids him at any moment. But like they catch him wearing so, like yeah. face masks and like getting his hair done and stuff, like making out mm-hmm. that he's, he's not really the bad boy Dean Winchester. 
Um, <laughs> right. Where I was like, I can't remember how they make Jared seem. But like, and then like Misha's just, just being like ostracized by everyone and like constantly like making fun of, which is also kind of true, but they amped it up for this. Mm-hmm. Like, it's all, it's all quite a good character. If you never watched that, actually, like it's, it's quite funny. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe we'll have to do have, like a... It, it rings like, familiar, yeah. I will say that. But yeah, that, comparing that to this, and it's like, it's actually not that dissimilar, but like they just ramped up the caricature and this like behind the scenes <laughs> yeah. thing that they did. But yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I love this episode. It's great. Like, it's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we get the, is, is there anything else you wanted to add before I get into this? I don't think so. Let's do it. I'm sure I've got stuff to say as we go on. Okay. It's cool. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, so we have the recap mm-hmm. and it's basically the angel plot for this season that we haven't really seen. Yeah. Um, because we get an introduction to, we get Cass's introduction from season four. Um, then Raphael's introduction. Uh, we also get a bit of Balthazar mm-hmm. in there as well. And when he destroys, uh, Raphael's original vessel. Yeah. Um, we also see Meg 1.0 with the cutting of the throat and the blood oh, in the bowl yeah. while she makes a phone call mm-hmm. which is tied to one very specific scene and i was just like why why choose that one i know it's the first time we see it but like i'm pretty sure crowley's done it or um meg 2.0 has done it they just do like a too. search like blood ritual bowl stick that one in <laughs> yeah yeah i guess so um and then showing Ruby as well mm-hmm. and how Sam and Dean eventually kills her. Yeah. Um, we then cut to Bobby's house and Sam's coming in from somewhere um, and asking where Bobby is. And Dean says he's gone on a supply run. Mm-hmm. Do you think they did this so that they just could be in a location? Yeah. That was like kind of familiar and like it'll be in a soundstage. Do you think that? I, I, I'm gonna answer that question for a different question. Do you think ben Edlund writes supernatural fan fiction? I think he does. <laughs> I think so. Because yeah, like two characters being in a place and then the person you would expect to be there just being gone for some inexplicable reason is such a fan fiction trope. This is so funny <laughs> to me. If he, if he hasn't written any, then he has definitely read some. Yeah, right. I mean, to be fair to Ben Edlund, his fan fiction has become, have become episodes. So, you know. Yeah, that's true. But, um, yeah, that's true. Very true. Yeah, that, that's Greatest what I thought. Episode, to be honest. Yeah, it was just like, oh, yeah, who are the two main characters? The third character who you don't want to write about is just inexplicably gone for some reason. Yep, this, this is fanfic. Yeah. Because, <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it's not a nice day. It's like a horrible, stormy night. Yep. And he's gone out to get, like I said earlier, uh, Hunter's Helper, which is just whiskey. Yep. And it's just like, sure, Bobby has such a good pantry, as mm. is pointed out. Yep. You don't think he has, like, copious amounts of alcohol, like, around? Also, you're telling me Bobby Singer doesn't have a still? Like, <laughs> that he's not making his own moonshine? <laughs> That's true. There is definitely moonshine on that. <laughs> out there somewhere. Yeah. Or at least some scrumpy. Come on. Like, come (laughs) on. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then Balthazar shows up. Yeah, I just... And he's all in a panic and he's gathering items and he's like, have you seen The Godfather? And he sort of explains the scene where Michael Corleone is going after his enemies Mm -hmm. and all of this. I will say, I have not watched The Godfather in like forever. I've never watched The Godfather it's it's okay it's for classic cinema like it's very good but like eh. yeah <laughs> i didn't say that though <laughs> i didn't say that there. <laughs> it's fine you're allowed to say that <laughs> <laughs> um and so balthazar's going through all the like ingredients that he needs he goes over to like he doesn't even walk over to the fridge. He like zaps himself over the, to the fridge yeah. where there just so happens to be lamb's blood, which of course <laughs> I mean, it's Bobby Singer's it's house. Bobby's house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was like, does he use that for cooking something or is it just literally to just have? Yeah. It's probably just to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just to have. And then he's like going through all of this stuff and he 
gets the bone of a lesser saint and uh, this is where he says, your Mr. Singer does have a beautiful pantry. <laughs> um, and he's trying to explain that uh, Raphael is after him. After him mm-hmm. And he's trying to like, he's doing his major move and trying to take out all the players all at once. And that includes Sam and Dean. Um, and Sam's like, oh, where's Cass? And he's like, oh, Cassie, he is deep, deep underground. So... Good old Rafi put out a hit list on every last Samaritan who helped our dear Cass, including both of you. The big bad shows up, Virgil, Mm -hmm. and Balthazar gets knocked away. Balthazar's also been stabbed uh, by something. And then they go through glass and land on like the the pads, Mm -hmm. like the safety pads, and you hear... A director, Bobby Singer, yell cut and like a crew member comes up and is like, good solid fall, guys. Well, way to go. And then we get the one of the crew members say like supernatural scene one echo take one tail slate marker. And, and they do the title card. And I was like, I was right. I was right when I said that this uh, title card is about breaking barriers, <laughs> breaking walls, mm-hmm. breaking fourth wall. Yep. Um, yeah, it worked perfectly. <laughs> it did. So we kind of cut to, once they've gone through the window, we have this like cut moment. We then do actually like a hard cut. There are a few little bits they do like this, but they like, they cut the things in the show the same as the actual show. That doesn't make sense. But you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Um, so yeah, they do a hard cut into Sam and Dean like walking around being like, there's no angels, no angels. Mm-hmm. Uh, they... You kind of overhear, um, like, Bob Singer and Serge. Uh, I think Serge is the, like, visual effects guy, right? He's... Yeah. No, he's he's the director of photography. Yes, director of photography. The, the, over, mm-hmm. the overall director of photography. So they're kind of chatting about what they just saw on camera because they're like, it was good, but, like, there was a problem with the signal on the camera coming through if they kind of can't use it. Um, mm-hmm. While they're kind of chatting about this footage, again, we get, like, Sam and Dean being like, what the hell is going on? Like, I'm looking around. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sam says... Should we be killing anybody? I don't think so. How much did we get? Running? Oh. Where? (laughs) (laughs) I I love that that's where his mind goes first. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) The the funny... The really funny thing is... Mm -hmm. Right? So, um... They've been on a set before in Hollywood Babylon. Yes. So it's just like, you know what's going on here. <laughs> and I, I, I do think that helps them a little bit in this situation. They're kind of not so out of their depth. I mean, Dean should know. He was at PA for like a week. Ago. Yeah, right. And he had a great time. <laughs> he um, but yeah. So they... <laughs> They're talking about how um, the window needs to be reset. Like it's going to take like a good like 90 odd minutes, which is wild. Um, and like Sam picks up a piece of the window and like wobbles it back and forth like <laughs> jelly. Um, he's like, the, this guy says, oh, you know, we could, we'd have to, if it takes 95 minutes and if we do this, we have to blow off the scene uh, where they sit in the Impala and talk about their feelings. And Bob Singer says, like, ha right, you answered the hate, <laughs> hate mail. <laughs> so the guy he's talking to is the first AD. Yes. Who's also a real person. So it's so cool that they did include them in this, to be fair. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, this guy, so Kevin, who is the AD, uh, says, oh, you know, we could have them fly at the window, then freeze frame and cut to black. <laughs> but, Remember this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really this. This comes up later. <laughs> and um bob's seeing us just like freeze frame and they're like freeze frame like, mm-hmm. and he's just like yeah in the end he's just fine whatever it's season six like i don't care anymore so do you think this is like kevin is the reason why every bob singer episode has slow-mo and like <laughs> i'm thinking of um roanoke Oh, yeah. Where they have like all of that weird like like to pad out time. Do you think that was all all Kevin's suggestions? Is, is and it, they're just like, yeah, fine. Is it Kevin's fault? 
Maybe it's Kevin's fault. I think it's Kevin's fault. That's a convention question. (laughs) Is it Kevin's fault? (laughs) Kevin Parks. Yeah. Is that, is it all his fault? fault? It's a slow mo. (laughs) His fault. Other Zooms, his fault. (laughs) Who knows? Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. So they decided that's fine, um, which means that Jared and Jensen are done filming. Um, They're still looking really confused. Like, Sam's like, who? This is going to get real confusing real quick. But he's like, who the hell is <laughs> Jared and Jensen? Um, and they kind of get like led away. And the interviewer like ambush, ambushes them in the set. Uh, whereas like Dean gets taken away by makeup. Um, mm-hmm. She kind of basically pushes him into like the makeup chair. And she's like, okay, <laughs> we're just going to take this makeup off your face. And he's like, I'm not wearing any. Then he like, wipe, like it gets wiped off his face. Um, mm-hmm. and he's just, he looks mirror and says oh crap I'm a painted whore which <laughs> why <laughs> like background stuff so like in in the mirrors because you can see they're like next to each other they have um, what would normally like would be um, like continuity shots of them so there's like different pictures but they've included in there some like fun behind the scenes ones as well of like the making silly faces mm-hmm. and stuff which I thought was real cute and I like that as well. Yeah. Um, this interviewer is is interviewing Sam slash Jared and she goes through basically the whole plot in like two seconds. It's like, you beat the devil, <laughs> lost your soul and got it back again. What's next for Sam Winchester? Um, <laughs> and she's like, oh, you know, if you could say the question and your answer as well. It's like, ha <laughs> <laughs> we don't get to hear the answer which i'm really like i think they Sad should about. have yeah, yeah i'd like to have known what he would have said um because they just like meet back up together <laughs> Dean, <laughs> dean's outraged that he has makeup on um mm-hmm. whereas sam's realized that it's a tv show um I, I, and dean's, dean's thought the same thing that i did was like well duh <laughs> <laughs> you think <laughs> um so yeah sam's like this is like a twilight like this whatever twilight zone that balthazar zapped us into like our lives are tv shows um i love this conversation of dean's like why <laughs> <laughs> who would watch this <laughs> and then just like this throwaway line of sam saying well apparently not very many people <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's like yeah I'm just saying we landed in a dimension where you're Jensen Ackles and I'm something called a Jared Panalecki (laughs) Um, I love the fact that he refers to himself as a something uh, like it's a name it's just a name (laughs) and they just ask him if he's Polish because Panalecki is a is a Polish surname presumably like Eastern European I guess so Um, yeah so yeah they they leave the studio. All this happens. It's so whirlwindy. This episode is the things happen very yeah. quickly. But I, I mm-hmm. quite enjoy the chaos. So they go out and in, onto like the back lot, and they see the Impala just getting absolutely like <laughs> wrecked by this guy, <laughs> flinging like buckets of mud all over it. Um, and Dean's about to like tell him off when he notices all the other Impalas lined up like a broken one. Like a, mm-hmm. all sorts of different impalas, <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he like looks like he's about to throw up. He just goes, "I'm sick. I'm gonna be sick. I want to go home. This place is bad. <laughs> touching me." I, I wonder what it is about. I, I guess the impala is so close to him that just seeing like a facet, like a facet of all these broken impalas, would you, his mind not immediately yeah. go to? But I could get that spare part I need. <laughs> you know, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so Sam's like, okay, fine. What do we do? We find Cass. And Dean's like, okay, yes, we're going to find Cass. And he prays to him. I love whenever Dean prays to Cass, yeah, because he, <laughs> he's so awkward in it. And like, Sam never really does it. It's always it goes down to Dean because they know he's not going to answer Sam firstly. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, true. But it's just like the the way he closes his eyes and he's like I love it. I don't know, I can't explain it. <laughs> he just says Dear Castiel, who art maybe 
running his ass away from heaven. We pray that you have your ears on. So, breaker, breaker. <laughs> and yeah, that, that works. And they spot Cass walking towards him like quite determinedly. So they run up to him um, and ask him what's going on. They, they, they say, what did Balthazar do to us? And Cass says in his Cass voice, <laughs> you know, oh, to keep you out of Virgil's reach, he'll, he cast you into an alternate reality, a universe similar to ours in most respects, yet dramatically different in others. Which I've never, what I love about this line is that he's explaining what's happening. Right. But it, it also <laughs> means that the, the scene, the, the, the episode they're shooting is still the meta episode. Yes. So. Because he's, because the lines that me, um, Misha, Cass will say next is what Cass says at the end of the episode or very, very similar to what he actually says. Yeah. Which is really confusing to me personally <laughs> because yeah because so the scene the scene they shot of them coming out the window and landing on the crash pads that whole scene was the episode <laughs> <laughs> i hate this stupid meta <laughs> <laughs> so i guess um but where's so I, but where's their fake crew? Where's their fake fake crew? How deep do the layers go? <laughs> yeah. Um <laughs> Where's their fake fake so Cass? I, where's their fake fake Dean? Slash like you know what I mean? Like where's <laughs> So I'm wondering if like in the in the this universe episode they get sent to like the real supernatural oh maybe uh, right yeah i don't know my, or something my brain hurt well, no because that, that wouldn't work because they, they're still they shooting all, the uh, show red... it's still the same show yeah so where's their fake bob singer <laughs> <laughs> oh how, how many layers deep does this go how many layers <laughs> <laughs> because in that one they would have to do it again right yeah so maybe, maybe the, maybe in this universe episode, it goes to like, just a, another one where they're not hunters. Wait, anymore. wait, wait. Did, so did, did Jared and Jensen in this universe, did they get booted to another universe? And does it just keep going? Like ad infinitum down the windows I think they get switched. So I think <gasps> that Jared and Jensen are in... Well, no, because that doesn't make sense. No, 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 yes, yes. They get bumped into their universe and are actually killed in that universe because everybody gets killed. Yeah, fine, episode, yeah. Right? So there's no, there's no more supernatural. Yeah. So, um, which I feel like is a commentary, to be fair. <laughs> <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> um... And that's why Virgil knows how to get here. Yes. Because he's killed the the J Jensen and Jared. And they're like, we, w this isn't our world. I don't know who you are. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> so not only in this episode do they kill, like, the death of the author, you know, Kripke, but also mm -hmm. everyone mm -hmm. else involved in the show, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they do. <laughs> Wild. No, I think you're right. I think I'm going with that. I think they got switched. I think they got killed. And that was the end of Supernatural <laughs> in that universe. Mysterious disappearance yep. of Supernatural actors plus one murder. <laughs> like, well, there's, there was multiple murders because there was obviously Misha. There was... Oh, yeah, there was... Bobby Singer. Yeah. There was... Uh, a, was it Surge who gets killed? I can't remember um, who's definitely with him. Eric Kripke. It, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Which makes me sad because that means they didn't get the boys in that series, uh, in that universe. That universe sucks. No. Nah. Yeah. I just, yeah, it does. but uh, yeah, anyway, the layers. <laughs> the layers. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Dean goes back and he's like, like Bizarro Earth, except instead of having Bizarro Superman, we get this clown factory. Um, and like, 
Kath looks confused. He's like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, do you have the key? Um, <laughs> so Sam gives him the key. Oh, yeah, so Balthazar gave Sam a key. He, like, put it in his pocket before. He yeah, yeah. Um, that's right. And Sam's like, what's this thing do? And Kath says, it opens a room. <laughs> <laughs> but if there's a lock, there must be a key. <laughs> there's a key. There must be a lock. <laughs> We're both doing the hand movements, by the way. You can't, you can't do this line without doing the hand movements. Oh, this is my favourite, favourite line of Supernatural. Um, so yeah, in the room is every weapon Balthazar stole from heaven. Uh, and he, they're going to keep it safe uh, until Cass has a chance to rally his forces. Um, and then Sam says, okay, cool. What do we do with this TV crap? To which Cass says, what? Um, and... They, yeah, they, they argue with Sam's name slash like Pedaleski, Lecky, because he, 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 uh, Jensen slash Dean says, Amen, Pedaleski. <laughs> um, to which point Cass starts flipping through pages. This is where I'm getting to. Um, and he's like, oh yeah. man, did they pull out through pages? And it's Misha! <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, he takes his tie off and like unbuttons his shirt. And at that point, you're just like, <gasps> What's he doing? And, and <laughs> Dean's face when he starts undoing his tie is like, I know, like he's watching him Why is this rip like? on camera. Like he's like, what is he doing? Um, I think whoever wrote Misha's character in this is probably more friendly with Misha than maybe Jensen and Jared. Like they feel like they know him better because I feel like this is quite a good caricature of him. Like. Mm-hmm. Especially Misha in 2011 or whenever this was. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. because the tweeting. The Namaste the shirt is hilarious to me. <laughs> like, because it's something like he, he probably wouldn't wear, but like, also like he would. <laughs> mm-hmm. That jacket that he's yeah. wearing, is that? No, Steve doesn't wear that jacket. Never mind. Never mind. There is a pop figurine of like, a Misha pop that does wear that little jacket yeah but Mm -hmm. yeah Uh, I have it (laughs) (laughs) I do love that too because again it's like it's kind of like a hippie style enough that like I don't know if Misha would actually wear it but it's a good enough like that you think maybe he would wear that actually (laughs) (laughs) I I feel like Ben Edlund wrote this character like he knows Misha and it was it's just close Mm -hmm. enough that it's not quite right but you like you can see that it's kind of right um yeah so yeah he unbuttons his shirt and he has like a a a namaste t-shirt underneath it has actually the symbol for om on it i only know that because i went to like this really new age yoga studio for a while (laughs) for a while (laughs) um and he's like you know do you you guys want to run lines sam grabs the, the, the script off him and like dean looks it too and clocks his name um, and <laughs> I still don't, I can't say it. <laughs> like, <laughs> the name's Misha. Misha? <laughs> <laughs> Just the way, like, what is it with Dean and names? Like, he's so offended. <laughs> to be fair to him, like, I feel like everyone in Supernatural has quite traditional american names like dean sam bobby whereas like the actors kind of have more modern names like mm-hmm. yeah like i know True. yeah um because i don't feel like you meet many jensen's or jared's i don't know not in england anyway to be fair, i don't know um <laughs> Yeah, like, but I, again, they are also, they were born in the 80s. So that's also, like, there's also, like, generational names. Like, so true. the hugely popular popular ones now are, like, Leo, Logan. Like, I see a lot of those. Mm-hmm. Um, like, in our generation, Amy and Jessica were super popular. Oh, do you know how many people um, I know called Sophie? Like, honestly. Oh, Sophie, yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah, a lot. 
Yeah, you're right. It's, it's the kind of like wax and wane in popularity and what's considered unusual and what's not considered unusual, like change as well. So yeah, I, mm-hmm. but uh, yeah, so their names are different. And I guess that is because <laughs> like, I don't, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I am very curious as to why why the names of Fendine so, <laughs> so much. Like, is it is it because, like... I don't know. He, I guess he, he likes familiarity, yeah. right? So, like, Sam is Sam. Mm-hmm. Dean is Dean. Cass is Cass. Like, these are the people that I know, and that is it. <laughs> so you cannot change your name. Yeah, that's totally right, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just thought it's it, it funny. I, I also think it's... Maybe that uh, name's both in the J is just strange to him. Like, why? How did that it occur? Could be, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Um, and <laughs> Misha's like, "You guys really punked me. I'm totally gonna tweet this one." I mean, <laughs> he tweets from his like, "What even is that? It's some kind of Motorola, I think." Oh man, phones were wild <laughs> yeah. back then. Um, they were. Like, hola, mis amigos, J squared got me good. Which is, it's so close to the truth because obviously, like, we referred to them as J2 um, rather than J mm-hmm. squared. And then, like, mis amigos. And I was saying before, like, in this at this time, Misha's fans was co- were called Misha's minions. <laughs> which I still mm-hmm. kind of hate. Because this is when um, Gish was starting to happen too. Yeah. Right? Like, so that, that was where it kind of came about because, like, Everyone basically did, as he said. Yeah. <laughs> and as we know, Misha, like us, is terminally online. So he does tweet a lot. Yep. Well, he used to tweet much mm-hmm. more, to be fair to him. Um, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> so I just, I just <laughs> like the kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. Dean says, I want to dig my finger in my brain and scratch to a back in Kansas. <laughs> Ooh, they never said sure. we're not in Kansas anymore, which I feel was a missed opportunity. <laughs> this is close. Yeah. Um, True. So yeah, and like they just walk off from Misha, and he's like, "I'm really starting to feel like one of the guys." <laughs> what I love about this is that like Dean just throws the script like over Misha, like into the yeah. distance, like he's just, like getting his aggression out. <laughs> But like, the, I guess the joke is like, it's not weird to Misha because he's treated badly by them on set anyway, right? So he's just True. like, they're just punking me. It's just kind of sad. <laughs> yeah, but then you think, I think about the real pranks that they've pulled on Misha and it's just like, it's, in comparison, that's pretty it's like, not like, that far, the penny yeah. thing. The penny thing, yeah. <laughs> it's not that far from the truth. That's what I mean, like, it's close enough to the truth. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, so they walk past this huge trailer and Sam says Jay Ackles and (laughs) I love love this like that's fake me yeah this must be fake mine he has a like a drone helicopter on the table and a massive fish tank um, and they make comment on it as well Uh, Mm -hmm. Sam pulls out like finds a laptop and starts like typing his name in um, to find out who Jensen Ackles is. We did look at like the screenshots of this. It's actually not very, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, no. Unfortunately. <laughs> um, and Dean's like, well, you know, he's not a hunter, but he plays one on TV and they're showing like dailies, I think, from another mm-hmm. um, episode, which we could not clock um, where that was from. Um, mm-hmm. And he picks up a magazine with them on the cover, which... I never knew this existed, but this is apparently from the Supernatural magazine, which I would love to read. I need to find a copy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet there's someone out there who has all, I think they said 24 copies of what I read. I think, I, I bet oh, there's yeah. someone here out there who has all of them. Scan yeah, them absolutely. in. It's lost media otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he says, look at these male modeling sons of bitches. Nice blue steel, Sam. Um, and so I was like, well, apparently it's our job. And like, it says you're from Texas. To be fair, Dean's like, really? And I thought, wait, why does he act like that? And he's like, nope, cowboys. <laughs> cowboys. Yep. Yep. That's what it yep. is. I'm yep. a cowboy. I'm from Texas. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Sam points out that he was on a soap opera and they pull up this old ass looking YouTube clip of Days of Our Lives. Um, <laughs> it's just hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love that he probably had to get permission for that and like tell him what it was for and everything. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Dean like slams it shut and he's like, I don't like this. We need to get out of this universe. And Sam's like, you know, I don't think our prayers are reaching Cass. But like... Dean starts getting out this pad and starts scribbling and he's drawing the sigil that Balthazar put on the window to like crash them through and he's like, well, if we can reverse Balthazar's spell, um, we can get, we basically get the ingredients and go back through the window. Um, and yeah. he does say here, there's no place like home. But I still think he should have said, maybe, maybe that's the bit that's trademarked from the Wizard of Oz. Maybe you're not allowed to say we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they've said it though. I'm sure they've before. seen each other as well. I'm not sure though. Um, Maybe they didn't want to be like super obvious with it. Yeah, true. True. So they go back to Bobby Singer's office and they're looking through the drawers and stuff and they pull out like the backbone of the state and it's like made of rubber. Um, <laughs> though I, you're right because I love this. And it's like, Dean pulls out my, <laughs> and he's like, look at this. And it's like rubber. Um, and like, of course, it's all fake as the film set. One of the crew members like comes along, um, and they're like watching, <laughs> watching them through the window. <laughs> like, dude's just like repeatedly stabbing Sam with this <laughs> fake knife. <laughs> yeah, um, and it's, it's Bob Singer, and he's just like, well, you know, at least they're talking to each other, but they look just like absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so they go back out again to the back lot and Sam's like, of course it's fake. We need to get back to the real world. And they go to one of the impalas and like, get it. <laughs> <laughs> Almost like muscle memory. They both sort of like just slide in yeah. together. Um, and like Dean starts it and starts like driving off. And you see this like young crew member that's like running like, Mr. Ackles, Mr. Ackles, please, please stop the car. Please stop the car. <laughs> it's not like running correctly. Um, mm-hmm. and eventually he stops and like Dean like slams the thing. He's like, "Of course it's fake, it's just like everything else." <laughs> um, so how the hell are we supposed to get out of here? So again, we, ha- we cut to them in a in the back seat of a car getting driven by Cliff, who, mm-hmm. as we know, is their bodyguard. Um, and he's asking where they want to be dropped off. Um, of course, they don't know where they live, so. Nope. Dean gets out of that one by just saying wherever Sam's going <laughs> <laughs> but he can't remember his name because he's just like oh, I'll tag along with uh, Jared 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 here <laughs> so good um, they get Cliff's name wrong as well because he calls him Clint at one point yeah. it's the fact that like he's not bothered by it presumably because like they're supposed to be stuck up actors so he's kind of like yeah they've never bothered to learn his name kind of thing probably Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So they're gonna go back to Jared's place and learn, let's go over some lines, work on our acting <laughs> for characters on the show. <laughs> um, Dean says, "Where the hell are we anyway?" And as he does that, they pass a massive sign that says Vancouver. <laughs> and he's like, "We're not even in America." <laughs> okay, Dean, the nationalist, calm down, calm down sir. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So they enter Jared's mansion, which is huge. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Sam says, Wow. I must be the star of this thing. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) I love the yeah, right. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, yeah, right. (laughs) And the funny thing is, I think at this point, like, Jensen's popularity is also on the rise, yeah. right? So, yeah. <laughs> I, that must be, a, again, that must be like a dig of that. Because, of course, uh, Jensen's above him on the call sheet, presumably because of alphabetizing. Or they would make a big deal out of that, presumably because of alphabetizing. But, like, I said that really in a weird way. Um, but, yeah, that's quite fine. <laughs> um, yeah. So they they point out this tanning bed, which is hilarious because like I don't think they ever look like they've been near a tan bed ever in their lives. Who is that? Well, no, for? isn't that a thing that they have? Hmm? No, no, it is them. They do use it. They do. 
like for when they're w- filming in winter because oh. obviously it's like I just never th- I'm pretty sure they've said I've said they've said that they've tan they've had to tan before yeah. I'm so pale I wouldn't understand the concept of tanning. Like, I would just burn. Even in a tanning bed, I'm sure I would just burn. Like, I'm I'm the bottom end of the foundation scale, like, zero, zero, one. <laughs> Maybe not quite. <laughs> Maybe not quite anymore. But, yeah. Um, so, <laughs> Sam says, what am I, Dracula? And Dean says, George Hamilton, Dracula. I think George Hamilton is quite famous for having quite a deep tan. Um... And Dean spots a liquor cabinet and he's like, yes. And then he looks out the window and says, you have a camel in your backyard. <laughs> to which point Genevieve appears slash Ruby, because they think she's Ruby. And she's like, it's an alpaca mm-hmm. dumbass. Um, he, of course, calls her Ruby. That's Dean. And she's like, ha ha, mm-hmm. it never gets old. And then walks up to Sam's like, how was work today? And kisses him. Yeah. yeah. I just, right, I just have to address this. How did Sam not freak out? I like, I know everything, everything in the day has been a lot, but she betrayed them, tried to, like, she's the whole reason he went to hell. But he's just like, yeah, "Yeah, she's still hot. (laughs) I mean, I think as a commentary on, but like, well, maybe not. I don't. Yeah, I mean, like, shouldn't they be more worried that she's alive? Like, Ru- Ruby, quote unquote, is alive. Yeah, like, what if she comes back on the show? <laughs> Does that mean she's alive? Yeah. No, I, I think. I mean, obviously, it's funny, right? It's, it's obviously for the fans because they know they got married, right? Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah, yeah of course right. they did. Are they going to address this in this episode? Ah, they did. Isn't that so funny that like Sam married Ruby? Like, fine. But like, actually thinking about from Sam Winchester's point of view. Why? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean they they had a pretty intense thing. They did, right? The yeah. But then she betrayed them horribly, and then they killed her. So it's just like, yeah, As, like especially with the the knife, like with her knife too. So, yeah, they should be freaking out more. Yeah. I, 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 like I said, I guess the whole day's been a lot. So it's like, of course it's Ruby. Like, <laughs> Well, I guess just before Ruby appears or Genevieve appears, mm-hmm. um, he, Sam spots the, like, um, matching yes, pictures. Yes, they're really good. So I think that probably also, like, clued him in that she would appear at some yeah. point. Yeah. Like, 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 I know it was, like, super, super fast, but, like, yeah. I love that like they someone had to paint these like Andy Warhol esque like I wonder if they got <laughs> to keep them. Like would you keep painting of your own fun. face? I kinda would. I don't know. Bathroom. I, I hope I that's another convention question. Did Jared keep the cowboy picture? And is that cowboy picture from the next episode? Because the next episode is Frontierland, oh, yeah. I think. I don't know if we write or just in this season. I can't remember. Yeah. Um. So they they do have cowboy hats. In that's that one. true. Yeah. But wild, wild to me, wild to me that all these things happen in this episode <laughs> with <laughs> with Ruby <laughs> slash Jen. Mm-hmm. Um. So and like when when Ruby kisses Sam. Yes. Dean kind of awkwardly like looks away. It was very, it was very reminiscent of when uh, Misha, uh, Misha, Cass and uh, Meg yeah. made out in uh, Caged yeah. Heat. He was just like, ha, 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 I don't know what I'm going to do. So I'm going to look away. <laughs> kind of like awkward. Um, and he's like, wait, you and Ruby? Mm-hmm. And Jen's like, do you honestly think that's funny, Jensen? Um and he's like, right, 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 yeah. Because uh, you're you're not Ruby. I mean, you're, how could you be? Of course, <laughs> like, you're the lovely actress who plays Ruby. And you're in Jared's house because you two are, and then he sees a pic, like their w- actual yeah. wedding photograph. Married! 
<laughs> it's like the best delivery. And what what makes this episode so, so funny yeah. is obviously they come back and have to act on set. But like this line delivery is so yeah. good. Like they are so good at what they mm-hmm. do. And then suddenly they have to turn around and be really really bad and i just think it's so funny (laughs) so great it's so great (laughs) and then he turns around like you married fake ruby what are you doing work and she's pointing out that you know they've never been to jensen jensen Mm -hmm. has never been to their house so it's kind of weird that like he would even be here and he's like well, now that I know there's an alpaca out back, I'm definitely coming back. Well, alpacas are the greenest animal. Jen is like dressed up really mm-hmm. nicely because she's going to go to uh, an international otter adoption charity dinner. The very obnoxious like Hollywood yeah. fake charity mm-hmm. things that make them feel good. It's like, okay, yeah. fine. <laughs> I'm Yeah, it's kind of weird that like she doesn't point out that, you know, Sam is not wearing the right clothes or anything like that. But anyway, that's maybe they didn't have the yeah. time. I don't know. This could have been twice as um, long as this episode, and I would have been still at a I know. <laughs> um, I kind of hate this next bit because like she leaves and both uh Sam and Dean like do the the stupid like head tilt thing as they watch her walk away. <laughs> I was just like, Ugh. <laughs> And Dean's like, well, it looks like you did all right. And he's like, Yeah, yeah. I should figure out her name. <laughs> Which is so funny. Like, you don't really think about it. You're like, oh yeah, damn. Like he doesn't know, doesn't know who she is. <laughs> not at all. Like she doesn't point out that he's not wearing his like red- wedding ring or anything no. like that. It's just like. It's just come from set. Okay. It will make sense in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Even though he's never done that before. And like. It's, they're anyway, just being real method. It is what it is. Like, you know, they're both going back to work on lines in their, in their set clothes. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, we then cut to like a, a library and Sam is sat in front of this giant picture of himself as a cowboy. Um, and he's looking for, uh, he's, he's reading the description of a, a wristbone. Mm-hmm. Um, and Dean's like, oh, you know, we can, we can leave now, get down there tomorrow and steal it. And Sam's like, or we could just buy it. <laughs> and like pulls out a credit card, like a like a fancy credit card, like a black credit yeah. card. Um, he then, Sam gets on the phone. And I love this. Hello, Jared Fowler. How lucky. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sam gets on the phone with this museum and just like buys yeah. it. Um, Dean is buying some other ingredients and he's like, oh, this card's out and like throws it away and just like picks out another like, one. <laughs> it's kind of alluding to the fact that like Jared is supposed to get paid more than Jensen in this thing because he's pulling him out of his own wallet and he's like, oh, this card's maxed mm-hmm. out. Mm. Like it's kind of, and then they made the whole like <laughs> star of the show joke as well. I, just, I think he's supposed to get mm-hmm. the idea that like Jared is the star of Supernatural in this universe, like solely, which I think is kind of funny too. Yeah. It's like Dean would be a bit put, put off by that because he's a little brother, <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. That's true. That's very true. Um, once they've bought everything, because it's going to arrive first thing in the morning at the airport, they're just going to go get it. Uh, Dean's like, Money, man. There is nothing like it. All right, couch, TV star, beauty rest. And he like falls onto the couch, which I think is really interesting for Dean to do because they're they're in a mansion. There are 20 bedrooms yeah. and he chooses the couch yeah. I just, of all places. Oh, yeah. I, I guess it's just a comfort, comfortability thing, right? Like... I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. I think he said he should have made the most of it. He enjoyed that steam shower in Bugs. <laughs> Bugs mentioned twice this episode. Um, but yeah, you know, he should have made full use of the amenities. Right? I mean, he got he got his use out of the liquor. I think yeah. that's probably what he wanted most after a day like it, they had. Yeah. You know. It's then like later in the day. I, I found this kind of interesting um, that 
even though Sam has a soul now, he still doesn't sleep very much. Mm. And I wonder, like, I mean, I would imagine you would have some sort of, like, insomnia from it, Just, right? like, a leftover effect, yeah. Why not? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, Jen walks back in. He's like, Hey! Hey! Hi! Hi, uh, Gen- Genevieve. Jen. Jen. Jen, of course, yeah. Um, so... Uh, how was the otter thing? And then he goes into like all of the disasters that had happened mm-hmm. um, before the apocalypse in season five. And she's like, yeah, I remember those from the last season mm-hmm. on your show. He's like, yeah, yeah, no, 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 right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, I got that. But like, and then she's like, you've been Sam Winchester for too lo- way too long. And then like leads him upstairs, which again, should not have happened. <laughs> Sam, what kind of like psychosexual drama are you playing with yourself <laughs> by doing this? Like, that's like, what I mean, just like the, the psychic damage that this is going to take. Like, do I just... Yeah, I mean, I guess I, I guess he's reconciled that she is not Ruby. Like, she's not But she looks Ruby. like Ruby. Like, right. <laughs> right. Like, leaving behind so all the... Does cons- he still... Yeah, go on. yeah. So did the, did, the, did the real Sam, like, actually fall in love with Ruby? I think they were in love. But I, th- or Ruby's I think he loved her. I do. Vessel? Yeah. I do think he loved mm. her. Which makes it the betrayal yeah. sadder. I- way, yeah, it makes it sad, but then also makes this, like, way worse. Because it's like, yeah, that's weird. Yeah. It's, I, just, I, just, I don't know, man. Like... <laughs> I feel like you got some things to unpack I, in therapy about this. That you, yeah. How would you feel if it was Jessica? The consent issues are still there, but like I feel like it would not be right. as weird. Like for for Sam. <laughs> like, but like Jessica's been dead for like six years. I feel like point. it would be more understandable though. I think. Yeah. I guess so. But like. Yeah, this one's a bit of a head it's trip. A, it's a bit of a head <laughs> trip. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's just helping him work through some stuff, you know? Uh, yeah, it's I guess so. Wild to me. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I feel like it would have been and what, more realistic if he'd, like, rebuffed her, right? Because she could have been like, why are you acting so strangely? Yeah. But, like, he's like, no. Let's get jiggy. <laughs> I guess, like, no, 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 no. which is more funny? Yeah, you're right. And when it comes down to Supernatural, whenever they ask that question, it's always like, ha ha, sex joke. More funny, yeah. ha. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah. I just feel like the inner turmoil of, like, sleeping with a doppelganger of a, the woman you loved and betrayed you um, led to you spending over a thousand years in hell um, and lose your soul needed to be unpacked more than this. <laughs> but that's kind of a lot to unpack in this episode. <laughs> Not a time. <laughs> um, I was gonna I was gonna say do you think Jen enjoys like in this in this episode Jen enjoys jared as sam like as a sort of throwback to their meeting on set oh, and everything as their car- like i i don't know I, well let's not dive into their yeah. like bedroom <laughs> activities but like <laughs> just like uh, that thought just like crossed my mind yeah. for a second i was like it's just because it's just... she she doesn't protest him in being sam i know she says you've been sam for too long but like she's not really not mentioning anything about his attitude. Yeah, it's just a weird scene, man. Like, I kind of, like I said, I get it because it's funny. Like, that's what they act it in because, like, mm-hmm. haha, haha. But, like, yeah. I think just the unpacking. Yeah. And you're right. Like, there's no, there, there's no real. All it implies, and this is awful, they don't know each other that well, don't spend much time together because he's acting really strange. He's like, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I guess. So. I guess this is it now. <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah um, that's kind of funny um <laughs> i'm trying to think of like an equivalent situation i'm like no this would never happen to anyone <laughs> <laughs> oh 
<laughs> nope. Wild. Nope. Nope. Wild. Nope. Yeah. So, um, it's the next morning, and they're at the airport, and Sam's picking up his package, and uh, Cliff is like, "So I'm here to pry, but uh, why are we picking up packages at 8 a.m. that haven't cleared customs yet? Just saving time." Right, here we go. We're not doing anything illegal, are we? Would it make you feel better if we said no? No. They get to set before anybody else, and they're they're putting together the 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 ingredients. But then all the lights come mm -hmm. on, and uh, Bobby Singer's like telling telling people what to do, and then he's like, "Oh, look, they're here before their scenes. That's amazing. Before first mm -hmm. run through, the dedication." Dean is like, look, can uh, can we just like clear the set for a set, like for like an hour or so? And Bobby's like, Bob Singer is like, you need it cleared. He's like, yeah, me and my brother are going to do, or me and Jared are going to do some actor mm -hmm. stuff. Um, Bob is like, oh, that's great that like, you know, you're correct. You're together talking and being so creative and it's, you know, your enthusiasm is refreshing. And we will clear this set exactly when we shoot the two and three ace pages we are scheduled to shoot on this set. So you do your actor stuff and we'll do our camera stuff and... Uh... After being put in this place, like, Dean sort of walks yeah. away. They then go to, like, the director's chairs with their names on it and Misha's already there. And he's like, oh, what's in the box? And Sam's like, I bought a part of a dead person. And he's like, oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Dean then says uh, kind of bad news it looks like we're going to have to do a little acting and then we get the best acting of all acting of Supernatural <laughs> I don't even know how to describe any of this because it's just it's just so good it's so so good we've all seen it I'll do some of it but maybe not all of it so um Misha says his line, as he does, and the first attempt, Dean misses his mark, and he's, like, got the script in his hand, and that they cut. He then does another take, and he says, Dean Grimley, and yet somehow you got no problem with it. <laughs> it reminds me of, um, oh, what's the name of the actor um, who plays Hercules, and he does that one where he read the thing, he just goes, Disappointed! That like, have you ever seen that? I need to send you that. I video don't think link. I've seen okay, that. Okay, that's fine. But yeah, it's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then it's Sam's turn, <laughs> and this is like that's be that's because we have no other choice. And he's like looking directly at the camera, and Dean says, "You know, don't look at the camera." So when Sam delivers his next line, he's like looking everywhere around but the camera. And then this is the. If there's a key, then there must also be a, a lock. And he raises his arms like a zombie kind of thing. Um, and he keeps doing it. And like, he's trying to, he's trying to say his own lines yeah. basically. Cause he's like, if uh, he does it again. If there's a key, then there has to be a lock. And when we find the lock, we can get the weapons and then we can have the weapons. And the lock, well, so we'll have the lock, I imagine, because we open it and, of course, the initial key. That... <laughs> so good. <laughs> like, he's giving, like, child at a school play, trying to be yes. over dramatic, <laughs> like the hand, the hand movements are, like, looking around and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's so good. He is playing actor. And all while this is happening, Dean has this face <laughs> of, like... I don't know what the face is, but like his neck is sort of stuck out. His jaw is kind of clenched and he's kind of pursed his lips. It's just so like, I'm concentrating I, on what I'm saying, but I don't know how to do I that. Don't know what he's doing. <laughs> like, I mean, I guess that's what everyone's thinking, but like, I don't know what he's doing. There's one point where he actually like lowers his voice even further than he does. Yeah. And you're like, so you know you're doing it then. <laughs> Because he's like, that's what yeah. he does. Like, he's pointing at Misha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which, because, I mean, that's another thing. Like, I feel like Jen could have been, been like, why are you talking in your sound Yeah, voice? that's so good, actually. 
Um, but anyway, just it, like it acknowledge the fact they all lower their voices to stupid extents. <laughs> <laughs> and uh dean's had enough he's like look do we really need all these lines i think i think we've covered it right um and bob's like what is happening <laughs> um and everybody's just like what is going mm. on like you know the kevin wants to stop and bob's like no they can't stop is it do you know do we have anything that we have anything we can use well, uh, technically, we have them saying everything in bits and pieces. Could be sort of experimental. Whatever. Season six. <laughs> Sam is there looking at the script and he's like, who says this? Nobody says penultimate. I wish that it could have been like a get this line. Yeah. Who says get this this many times? <laughs> like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and then it's called to be moving on. Uh, Misha then pulls out his phone. He's like, J and J had a late one last night. Then we, we kind of hear Sarah Gamble on the phone. Um, and she's like, spell it out for me. You know, what terror level are we at? Are we at? And Bob's like, I don't know. Orange, <laughs> maybe. Um, they've started talking to each other and she's like, well, you know, that's a good thing. It's like, yeah, but like. Jensen's living at Jared's house. <laughs> um, and in the background, like we're seeing them sort of complete the spell. Yeah. Um, and then he says, plus Cliff says they're smuggling illegal stuff in from Mexico because Misha's <laughs> tweeting all the time. They read his tweet and like, it could be, he says it's a black market <laughs> organ. I'm betting it's drugs. Um, and <laughs> Bob says, anyway, as far as I can see, I think they've lost any, any shred of talent <laughs> they ever had. And you then see Sam and Dean crash through the window like yeah. they did at the beginning of the episode. And Kevin's like, yeah, drugs. <laughs> it was drugs all, all along. Um, we then cut to Jensen's trailer and they're like, well, you know, some, we've did something wrong. And he's like, no, the spell was perfect. It should have worked. Um, and he's like, well, maybe Sam says maybe we can't. Um, he then said, Sam then goes on to say that he was up all night, well, not looking online. You were doing some other <laughs> stuff to me. Yeah. Um, and there was no signs of the apocalypse that ever happened here, ever. As far as I can tell, monsters, ghosts, demons, they're all uh, pretend. So, and Dean's like, so no hunting. So nobody's hunting them. And Sam says, no hunters. Um, maybe the spell doesn't work. Maybe there's no supernatural, no magic. And Dean goes on to say, no, no demons, no hell, no heaven, so no mm. God. And something like something like that, even better, no angels. Um, this got me thinking. Yes. Did God okay. just so okay, this is before I decided that Jared and Jensen were dead yes. in our supernatural, but if they were swapped mm-hmm. back and they were alive and swapped back, do you think God destroyed this universe uh, or like destroyed this universe even though there's nothing supernatural about mm. it because he is that petty that he doesn't even want like an image of what sam and dean look oh. like even though these people are not sam yeah and dean. he 100% destroyed this universe too he is that petty 100% yeah. <laughs> so he still exists just magic doesn't presumably so i think it's yeah universe um because mm-hmm. because god would exist because religion does ex- well i guess yeah religion does exist in this mm. in this um universe we presume i mean it must do actually for supernatural to well, exist yeah like <laughs> the concept of angels is probably not something that you could just pluck out yeah, of nowhere that's so funny. <laughs> like, that's so funny to think about it's like well supernatural would, would exist if it wasn't for the bible <laughs> <laughs> well the thing is they did reference other like ancient yeah you know, you're right you're right things I too am. so it's not just the bible but it's a lot of the bible yeah yeah <laughs> no that's it is it, 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 good to think about i mean the fact they like this multiverse idea so much that they like use it again in later seasons is is mm-hmm. cool um I yeah i wish we'd seen more like i do remember them saying that they had written 
a whole multiverse episode where they like jump between different universes and they just like didn't have the time. I'm like, okay, but you like, but again, Baba Yaga. But like, they they just didn't have the budget, I think, to to make all the different sets and stuff. That's upsetting Mm -hmm. to me because I would have really enjoyed to see that episode. Yeah, Mm. me too. That would have been great. And like, if they came back to this one. That'd precisely really that they could have like done a follow-up on this and like oh yeah they did die in our universe or like mm-hmm. how has this been going for 15 years <laughs> <laughs> exactly um and then the last part of this this part uh we see the sigil glowing against yeah. the glass and virgil crashes through like does a hero superhero <laughs> pose on the ground <laughs> so we again get hard cut from the bl- gra- glass breaking um, to a green screen where there's like a two stunt doubles like punching each other next to the Impala presumably supposed to be Sam and Dean which is funny that they're like having this fight is it foreshadowing do they have this fight later on in the season oh I don't do know I th- I'm asking I don't think, I don't think they do <gasps> I'm asking the question I don't know I think, but if they do now we can I point think, it out I don't think so yeah I don't think anybody slams it their head into the Impala yeah I don't know maybe one of them gets possessed at one point in this episode, in this season, I, I remember. remember. Um, so yeah, Dean's saying like, "Well, wait, you know, maybe we can't get out of Earth too, but we can at least get out of Canada." <laughs> um, <laughs> he's like, "If I hear one more conversation about hockey, I'm gonna puke." Um, then they step onto the set, which is from that dragon episode in the sewer, and they have like a little argument about mm-hmm. which way to go, which was. I, I feel like it was supposed to be like an in joke, but I like, didn't really get that one, but I quite enjoyed it. It was deliberate yeah. enough of like they've added this for a reason, but <laughs> mm-hmm. um maybe maybe that like there's something about one of them doesn't have a good sense of direction. Yeah, that's possible. Um so they walk along this like set and Sam spots Virgil. Uh Virgil kind of run he says like you think you can run and he lay, like puts a hand on Dean's forehead to smite him but like nothing happens mm-hmm. and they're like ha no mojo free zone and Dean's like punches him no magic in the house this makes you nothing but a dick <laughs> so stupid <laughs> um, so they start like beating the absolute crap out of Virgil because there's two on one and he's just a regular dude uh, we cut to Lou who is like the stunt coordinator um just behind Mm -hmm. them who's like saying how he overdoes all the stunts like trying to impress this woman um while we like see again like see them in the background like beating the crap out of Virgil while he's doing this uh so Lou is actually the same guy like they didn't get an actor to play him that's actually I thought he probably was to be fair like yeah, he must enjoy him. I was wearing like a Hawaiian shirt or something. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. <laughs> um, and then like she's like, "Oh, you know, wow, that's amazing!" Like, is that one of your fights? And she points to like Sam and Dean kicking Virgil. And he's like, "No, guys!" And the stunt doubles like run up and they like pull Sam and Dean away. Uh, like I said, at the, like beginning, I think these are their stunt doubles, which is hilarious. Um, Mm -hmm. and as as they kind of restrain them Virgil manages to grab the key from Sam's pocket and runs away Um, and Dean's shouting like absolutely seeing like a completely (laughs) crazy person yeah Uh, we see again like a boardroom um, that like Bob Singer's there he's got I think Sarah on speakerphone and it's supposed to be Jim Michaels it might actually be Jim Michaels I presume it is. It's not. It's not. No, no, it's, what he it's an actor. I, I think I have, I think I've weirdly met Jim. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. So, but, okay. The thing is, the actor who plays Jim Michaels played Deacon in Folsom Street Blues. Prison is that Blues. The episode name? Pl- Plurism Blues, that's right. Um, Yeah. So I was because when I saw the scene, I was like, "Wait, I've seen his face before," and I thought it was from the magician episode because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it was like three old white dudes. Yeah. So I was like, <laughs> it was an old white dude. But in the prison episode, the this particular actor has black hair. Oh, his hair is white. That's pretty cool, to be fair. Yeah, 
no. Yeah, so they're all having like a teleconference, which is so funny because if this was done now, this would be over Zoom, like 110 yep. percent. Um, mm-hmm. And they're explaining the situation, and Bob just says like, "We don't really understand it ourselves, but it's appeared that Jared and Jensen were uh, beating an extra to death." So it's just like, huh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess again like showing how like stars of TV shows are supposed to be like they're just able to get away with everything right because they need yeah. them to continue mm-hmm. the show um, <laughs> but, um, oh Kevin is also there and he's like oh but he could definitely still run and Bob's like yeah and we'll certainly follow up on that but I think the real issue here is that they appear to be some kind, on some kind of extended psychedelic acid trip she's <laughs> <laughs> um, so like okay maybe I'll talk to them and they're like oh you know well I'm not sure they know who you are. They're so rude to her. Like, I can't believe it. I know. Um, I love the fact that she's considered new, even though she's been writing since the beginning yeah. of the show. <laughs> I feel like this is kind of like a, a wink and a nod to like, yeah. Yeah. Um, they're like, yeah, I think we might need at this stage for a uh, Crip Key to come up himself. Like, he created the show and they'll listen to him and, make me look i'm supposed to be running this thing besides eric's off in some cabin somewhere writing his next pilot so it's bob's uh, in like incredulously says he sold octo cobra <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh he's like mother of god they'll buy anything <laughs> i wish i kind of like so a basic outline for octo cobra like what is it <laughs> is it about an octopus like snake or is it like a spy thing? <laughs> I have no I idea. Know. Yeah. So what what's kind of funny about this though is that um, reality kind of reflected fiction. Yeah. Because didn't Jensen say that for the Caesar series finale, like Caesar series finale, mm. he called Kripke about it? <gasps> <laughs> so he went over the showrunner which in this case is sarah yes. so he went over uh, andrew dab, dab and and spoke to kripke about the ending of the show that's so true so it is kind of true but it is kind of true <laughs> that's what i mean like it's that kind of they knew like the, the things they were putting in there like some of them maybe only people who work well, on the show would understand we have said that Ben Edlund is a time traveler, so this is what has happened. He's trying to warn he us. He's trying to warn us. He was. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder now how much this is. This is like just tin hatting. But I wonder how much like Cricky knew that he kind of maybe wanted Jensen for the boys and was like, you kind of wrap up, wrap up Supernatural. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder. It does make me think. No. Yeah. You know, yeah. Just make sure, make sure don't, don't fight at Jensen. Just, just, just do the, just do it. Just, just do it. It'll be fine. fine. Yeah, just, do, <laughs> just do the show. Like, just, just end supernatural. Like, it's fine. Ugh. Anyway, <laughs> stupid TV. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we go back to the supernatural set, and um, they're talking about Virgil because they obviously had no consequences to their action. <laughs> Of course not. They're uh, the main actors. So they're saying like maybe he has a wave to get back and like Sam's like maybe he's stuck here like us. And Dean's like, well, you know, I want to finish kicking his ass. Um we then it's then night time and it's outside Misha's trailer and <laughs> like a crew member said to him, like, good night, Misha, and he's like, night little fella. <laughs> <laughs> they they do kind of portray Misha as well as like almost being a bit like uh, like his his actual persona is not like the one he gives out because they show that bit when they're doing all the like scenes of them not acting. He like pushes away a makeup person like quite mm-hmm. yeah, and it's like maybe he maybe he is like the other two, but he just puts out this like persona. Um, yeah. So <laughs> he sits in his car and he tweets. Ever get that feeling? Someone's in the back seat. Frowny face. And then Virgil is in the back seat, like pulls a knife to his throat, and he's like, ah, ah, ah. "Drive." Virgil <laughs> 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 says, "Drive." 
I like that Mish is like kind of worse at playing himself than he was at Cass. Like, I don't know why that's funny to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. One point, I mean, those who are new to Supernatural probably don't know this. Or they might do because it's all over Tumblr. But like, um, they, Misha did actually text out these texts as they were coming out live on television so you could see them and they're probably still in his twitter feed somewhere um you probably yeah yeah, i thought that was pretty fun that's pretty nice touch as well you have to go to his text on february 25th 2011 oh thank you that's pretty yeah comprehensive there you go um so we're back at the set for bobby's house and bob singer has like cornered uh, Sam and Dean because they're kind of like <laughs> yeah so they walk into the set and he sat at Bobby's desk he like turns on the light like <laughs> yeah. a naughty parent like a parent <laughs> who kids have just gone home uh, which is really funny that he sat at Bob- Bobby's desk because obviously the character is named after him um, yeah which I don't know if again like spoilers I guess for the boys I don't know if you watched the final episode where obviously there's another character called Bob Singer in The Boys is also played mm-hmm. by Jim Beaver. <laughs> and like he makes a couple of references, like he says, like balls, and there's another one as well. He mm-hmm. says, Idiot. I was having this conversation yeah. with people. This, this is off track. I was having some conversation with people about this because obviously there are people who are fans of boys that I talk to who are, have never watched Supernatural. And I was like, mm-hmm. it's so niche. But like, in joke is so niche. Like, I feel like the Venn yep. diagram of people who watch Supernatural and those who watch The Boys is probably almost a complete circle, right? Like, I feel like if you're fans of Supernatural, you're probably watching The Boys. Maybe. I don't think it's... I. There is a Venn diagram for it, but I don't think it's that huge of an overlap. That's fair. So if you think about the but audience I, of Supernatural, which, again, not that big, right? And you think about the mm-hmm. audience of Boys and also people who have watched Supernatural, like, it's not that many people, and yet they put in these, like... No. I was like, who is this for? It's just for me. It's for me personally. <laughs> right. <laughs> it really, like, the, that's the really funny thing about those little little bits mm-hmm. in it. Because at the time of Kripke's writing, there were so many times where he just, you know, didn't like the fans. Yeah, I know. And like a sudden, and it, it makes me wonder if it was like, Maybe the actors who did it more. I, don't know. I feel like he's cooled on it, you know, like but, cooled on the whole fan yeah, thing. Probably. But like, yeah, it was just wild to me to see Supernatural references in another TV show because I feel like Supernatural is kind of like a cult classic at this point. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, and there are just bits when I watch The Boys, I'm like, that's a Supernatural reference. That's a Supernatural reference. Like this. Little... <laughs> I just, and then I just like think about it. It's like, but. Hey, who is this for? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I do, I think about like, the boys is so specific and like, I feel like some of the demographics for a supernatural is, is not going to be too happy with the plot of the boys. Like it could, cause it's kind of in your face about it. And like, when you meet some of the fan base of supernatural, it's, uh, but, you know, it's a little... There was that whole, like... Uh, I've talked about this. I don't know if I talked about it on the podcast before. But, like, there's that whole phenomenon about, like, straight guys of Reddit discovering Jensen Ackles, right? So they clearly weren't watching right. Supernatural before. But we would think they would be the target demographic for Supernatural. But it changed. Yeah. I do feel like it was... It, like, when you go to a convention, it's, like, 85% women. Yeah. How did they get it so wrong? Did they not learn anything from Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you learn nothing at all look and then like 10 percent are the husbands and boyfriends yeah. of the women that are yeah. there and then like the last percent is the men who actually enjoy yeah. the show yeah yeah i mean yeah look women love sci-fi and we love fantasy stuff and we love monsters and i don't understand why they keep making these things for for guys <laughs> don't understand it either and like it's not it's not even that they have to change it to like 
fit a female audience. Like I know so many women who love Lord of yeah, the Rings right. because it's amazing. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's just assumed that it's like a geeky guy who likes Lord of the Rings, you know, like this mm-hmm. is look, look, I could go on a whole rant about this. This could be a whole hour about how <laughs> mad I get about like, I feel it, it's gotten better. It's gotten better in the last 10 years or so about like women yeah. being in geeky spaces. And I would put supernatural in that geeky space because it's fantasy. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, uh, and I feel, I do feel like it has gotten better, but it's so much the default. And do you know whose fault it is? It's the Big Bang Theory's fault. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the portrayal of geek culture from that show is a bad one. And I feel like it still perpetuates a lot of like, stereotyping that people do the worst yeah yeah like they tra- they should right this is my bad my one mad bit they showed a star trek convention in like the 26th wherever big bang theory came out and it was still all just like nerdy dudes and i'm like but that's not true mm-hmm. i was going to star trek conventions at that time and it is about 50 50 like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I know. It's still the only convention I've ever yeah, got that, date kept at, and I'm still mad about it. <laughs> yeah. Was well, because of things like the Big Bang right. Theory. Like, I, yeah, I. that's one of the reasons why I don't like the show. I think it was just... Yeah. It was bad. It was Who's bad. for? <laughs> Who's it for? Because it's not for me. And I should, again, I should be the target demographic of that show. For those who are listening to this, we took an extended break. In case this doesn't flow, <laughs> cut this out as well. Yeah. In case it doesn't flow, but if it does, it's fine. Um, so I'm going to go back into the episode uh, because <laughs> <laughs> the dream is affecting I, Ace. <laughs> I was drinking before this episode, and uh, yeah, it's late for me. Um, right, okay. So back into the show. Um, yeah, we were talking about <laughs> we were talking about Misha. <laughs> That's where we started, right? That's what we get. We got to. Um, let me find. Do, 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 do. No, we we're talking about Bob Singer. We we're talking about Bob so, Singer and the boys. Yeah. Right. Let's get. Okay. Yes. 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 So. Um, yes. Back to it. We see Bob Singer sat in Bob Singer's chair. Meta craziness. <laughs> um, he is acting like their disappointed father, which Bobby Singer also is. <laughs> that's very true yeah (laughs) um and he's like what is it guys what's wrong with you do you just want some more money (laughs) and he's like no you pay us enough uh or like you pay these two jokers enough as it is um and he's like but you don't think of me as director bob or executive producer bob singer but as uncle bob and then they finally clock that his name (laughs) is bobby singer and Dean says, what kind of douchebag mm-hmm. names a character after himself? And so I was like, oh, that's that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> so they start again. And um, like, he's like, guys, you can't come to work on poppers <laughs> and smuggle kidneys from Mexico <laughs> and make up your own lines. Like, you can't make up your own lines. Like, that's the worst thing that they've done. Um, mm-hmm. He's like, what about your careers? And Sam says, screw our careers, Bob. And Dean said, you heard my brother. That's right, I said brother. Because <laughs> you know what? We're not <laughs> actors, we're hunters. We're the Winchesters. Always have been and always will be. And where we're from, people don't know who we are. But you know what? We matter to that world. In fact, we even save a son of a bitch once or twice. And yeah. <laughs> okay, here, maybe there's some fans some fans who give a crap about this nonsense. And I really like Bob just going, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Bob Singer, if this is even your name, tell me this, what does it all mean? <laughs> I, I love this. <laughs> I love this so much. And he's like, okay, fine. We've all had our psychotic breaks. Like, I can work with this. Um, mm-hmm. And they just, like, ignore him and they spot uh, like they think about Vir- like they, they check their pockets or Sam checks his pockets and realise that Virgil has the key um, yep. and they just shout at Bob Singer like we quit and leave <laughs> yep 
<laughs> it is so good this it is so meta it's like why did why does anybody care what is this all for we are the winchesters yep. like it was great Mm-hmm. I think part of this as well is because Dean was kind of thinking about staying. He's like, it's pretty good here. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. And kind of talking themselves out of it. Mm-hmm. I found this next scene weirdly upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I kind of found it sad to watch Misha get murdered. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, oh. Because I mean, he, like, usually when Cass gets killed, it's in a supernatural way, not by like getting stabbed in the neck yeah by like a seemingly someone who is having some kind of episode because like he's talking about mm-hmm. like he's like how do you do it <laughs> live in this grubby shabby desert nothing greater than yourselves <laughs> nothing but dirt when you die what? Ah! Ah! Oh! no power no magic so yeah, he drags Misha into an alleyway and he's like pleading for his life while Virgil spouts off about how terrible this world is and how he needs to make a call. Um, he's like, you're nothing but a bag of strings and pulleys. <laughs> <laughs> he says, you should thank me for what I'm about to do. And yeah, he slits his throat and gets the blood into a big bowl and, and tries to make a call. Uh, says yeah. Raphael. Yeah, sad. Misha dies. Like in mm-hmm. canon, be sure be sure he's dead in this universe. And he like falls down the wall as he's done. Oh, no, like, so, no, I actually Misha. found it quite upsetting. I didn't find mm-hmm. it upsetting the first time I watched it. Sorry, Misha. <laughs> <laughs> what I find really funny is that like everybody on set probably just thinks this guy is just like a crazy extra. Like yeah. he got beat up by the the stars. Mm-hmm. And now he's out for vengeance. Yeah. That's how the stories would have run, like, in the newspapers and stuff, you know? So, yeah. wild. Mm-hmm. So, at the Padalecki mansion, um, they turn back up. And they're talking about, like, oh, you know, maybe we can get a police dispatch system, like, an APB out on Virgil, blah, blah, blah. And Jen comes around the corner and she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, Misha's been stabbed to death. But this, first of all, not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> um and they both immediately just look at her and go where which is <laughs> such a buck wild thing to say mm-hmm. um i mean even she's like where, where? <laughs> <laughs> so they go to this alley there's a police court in there they see um like a home look i want to point something yes. out real quick oh. the caution tape sorry i have food in my mouth maybe i should finish it first <laughs> <laughs> okay the caution tape has a maple leaf from canada i'm pretty sure that's fake i'm pretty sure that's fake they should not put that on there right <laughs> right i wouldn't have thought so just reassuring <laughs> when i saw that i was like what they might as well have just had mounties like investigating this right <laughs> <laughs> amazing amazing work um so they see that this has been investigated. They spot like a, a homeless man who we saw in the alley scene uh, witnessing all of this. Um, they go and talk to him somehow. Don't know how. Um, and he's like, yeah, yeah, Raphael, like the Ninja Turtle. <laughs> uh, he was calling someone called Raphael and like the scary thing. Oh, he, after the scary man killed the attractive crying man. <laughs> um, and then he started to pray and like a strange part was, I swear I heard a voice answering and it's like, what did he say? He's like, oh, it didn't really make any sense. But he said for Virgil to return tomorrow at the place where he crossed over at the time of the crossing. And Raphael would reach through the window and take him and the key home. And he's like, okay, cool, thanks. And he, he like, Dean gives him some money. Um, Sam says, like, well, you know, Virgil gets back with that key. Cass is dead and our world is toast because weapons. Um, mm-hmm. And they're like, you know, well... He says, well, you know, how it's not how bad can an angel with no wings be? Like, we're going to stop him. Cut to Virgil in a gun store. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, Which I have a question for anybody who lives in Canada. Uh, is this that easy to get a gun in Canada? I thought it was like not like America where you can just go into a shop. But then again, Vancouver's right on the border. So maybe he just hopped over to America. I feel like, oh, maybe. Yeah. I feel like it's not that easy. Then they have similar gun laws to like the UK in Canada? I have no idea. I have no idea. I have no clue. Um, 
Yes, he's checking out all these guns um, and he knows all about them and stuff. Like he's looking at them like he he knows how to use them. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. And the the clock even says like, "You really know your ordinance, Mister." I am the weapons keeper of heaven. Excuse me. It's my job. So that's why he's been sent after the weapons because they they got stolen from his watch, presumably. Probably, yeah. yeah. Back at the supernatural set in Bobby's uh, office, um, Dean and Sam are chatting, and he's like, "You know, if we drop Virgil, get the key, like." then this might be it. We might get stuck here, you know, because if Virgil's not getting taken back, then they might never find another way back. Um, Sam's mm-hmm. like, no, no, we'll we'll figure it out. And Dean kind of has this little back and forth of like, well, it wouldn't be so bad, right? We have good lives here. There is uh, no hell below us, only sky, like above us, only sky. <laughs> Imagine mm-hmm. all the people. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sam's like, no, our friends are back there. Yeah, but who are their friends? Yeah. Bobby. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Josie, maybe. <laughs> um, <laughs> and things like... Yeah, but here you got a pretty good life. But back home, the hits have been coming since you were six months old. You got to admit, being a, 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 a bazillionaire married to Ruby, the whole package, it's no contest. No, you know, you were right. We just don't mean the same thing here. I mean, we're not even brothers here, man. Aw. And Dean's, at, at that, Dean like, agrees. He's like, okay, let's go back. <laughs> you know? Does Sam have, like, a really huge ego? Yeah. Because it's like, we don't mean a thing here. Like, as in Sam and Dean don't mean a thing here. Yeah. Whereas, like, in their world, they've saved the world so many times. But it's just like, yeah, but what? <laughs> also, like, Sam and Dean are what? important to me, personally. You know, as characters. <laughs> <laughs> you do me something. You do me something, guys. They do. <laughs> That's very true. We wouldn't be here if they didn't. Exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so... <laughs> this, is, this whole section is so dumb. I love it so much. Yep. yep. So we cut outside... This, this was fan service, I think. Fan service for who? Eric Kripke. For the people who, <laughs> no, no, no. For the people that like, because people, I'm, I'm guessing people had issues with Eric Kripke with his like the way that he perceived his fans. Well, Maybe. they get to kill him off. I, I feel like it's even more like metaphorical than that. It's like you have to stop holding on to the supernatural. That was mm. Eric Kripke's supernatural. He's dead now. Yes, <laughs> we killed him. <laughs> Sarah Gamble is the only one who's not on set, so she survived. Yeah, she survived. So she's the only one who can continue Supernatural. She's the only one who survived. You have to let her do it. (laughs) Especially since also Bob Singer gets killed. I know. And the director of photography gets killed. It's literally like, Like, there's no one else. You have to let her do it. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like that was, that's how I take it. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll explain the scene. So, yeah. Bob Singer and Eric Kripke turn up um, in a massive, like, Hummer. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Eric's like, what the hell? And he's like, oh, yeah, thanks for coming. Um, he's like, yeah, you know, I know you're busy, but, um, you know, but it's good to me that we can still call on you. And Eric's like, yeah, you know, Misha, right? And Bob says, yeah, it's just awful. Uh, and Eric says, yeah, totally awful. It did get us on the front page of Riot. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? again like talking about like the sort of the um commentary on hollywood right like a tragedy is actually beneficial for a show yeah any news is like good you know good exposure or whatever um yeah exactly they're like oh you know front page really and he's like yeah but, oh but tragic oh yeah yeah tragic <laughs> <laughs> and he asks about octa cobra and eric says oh i think i really had a breakthrough i'll tell you about it over lunch um so like oh yeah let's go over like we'll take care of this whole mess and then like they see that guy like Virgil and Bob says oh it's that extra and Eric's like great we can we can nip this in the bud um to which a crew member shouts he's got a gun and then like 
I don't even know how to describe this. Like cowboy shoot at out slow mo style. Yeah. Virgil shoots like the whole crew. It, it's like just the whole crew. Eric Kripke dies. Bob Singer dies. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Kevin dies. Kevin dies. Serge dies. Yeah, everyone dies. I I just feel like I don't know if Eric Kripke was. Eric Kripke had nothing to do with writing this episode. Just realized that he just came in to do it. I guess like they asked him if it was okay. Maybe he did ask this because I don't know. I want to know the story behind this actually. Like who wrote yeah. this scene and who decided to do it. Because is it a commentary on the fact the showrunners have changed, so we are killing off Kripke, so like, no, he's not doing Supernatural anymore, he's not coming back, screw you guys, he's dead. Mm-hmm. Or is it like the death of the author, where we like kill him off because, hey, the show's ours now, you know? I don't know. Yeah. I just thought it was really interesting, and I would love to ask Eric mm-hmm. Kripke, can he please come and do like one convention? I wonder. I wonder who they got on um, Robin Rich's podcast because you know they're they're doing their whole like <gasps> yeah. rewatch thing. Who they got on for this episode? Do you know I haven't listened to that in a really long time just because I'm yeah, no, I have no. a time deficit. I just don't have time at the minute. <laughs> I, I maybe I should pick out some select ones to listen to. I think this would be a good one. They must have talked about mm. this. Yeah. They yeah for sure. But yeah, sure. this, here's a good plug for Robin Rich's podcast. Like it's something that we did yeah, right? always <laughs> want, which is like a kind of behind the scenes podcast on this mm-hmm. show. And like I do, I, the ones I listen to are actually really fun to listen to, really good. Um, I need mm-hmm. to catch up on it. Yeah. Good, good shout. Good cool. I'll find, yeah, they must have talked about this. Um, yeah. So yeah, Eric Cookie's dead. And so we could go back to the supernatural <laughs> set. Um and they overhear the gunfire and they're like, I don't think we had to, you know, we weren't doing that on set today. Um, and Virgil like comes in and starts like shooting as well. And Sam like, lun- like shouts, hey, like Sam does. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Dean kind of punches him. Sam gets involved, manages to get the key back. And the, as the, all this is happening, uh, the sigil is glowing um, so and Sam finally notices it and shouts like "Run!" But they get thrown backward into the fake window, freeze frame, cuts black. <laughs> I love they did this. That's so funny to me. I just I, I love I love stuff like that. Like that good callback. It was yeah, yeah, that was a very very good callback. Um, and it it kind of signals the end of the control of this set right yeah the, the control of the supernatural show like mm-hmm. ha 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 we we made we did the thing yeah <laughs> that's so uh, yeah it was very very good um so then we are outside a motel and Raphael is there and he's like she's like because she's now in a different yes. vessel and she says you two have the strangest luck. Because I, I presume she didn't know who she was pulling through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dean makes a comment on the vessel and he, he says, dude, looks like a lady. Mm. It's like, you're just assuming that Raphael is a man. Yeah. Are you assuming Raphael's gender? You are. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's an angel. It's got no gender. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, she, uh, Raphael, like, grips their fist and like they bend over in pain like they do um and she picks up the key that's been dropped Mm -hmm. and then balthazar appears and he's like and that will open your locker at the albany bus station really and he goes on to explain what his plan was all along that he needed a decoy that was convincing um and Raphael asked for the weapons he says sorry you know they're gone um he says you see they were so well hidden that I needed time to find them. So I volunteered these two marmosets for a game of fetch with Virgil. I think it's really funny mm-hmm. that like this is this is uh, Balthazar's revenge for like it so is everything that's happened yeah. so far. Yeah, and Sam and Dean look rightfully like hurt by this yeah. and like what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and he he then goes on to say, "You two were such adequate uh, sticks. Thank you, thank you, boys." Mm-hmm. Um, 
Raphael then goes on to say, you've made it your last mistake. And he's like, oh, I've got so many more, you know, don't worry. And then Cass appears and he's like, step away from him, Raphael. I have the weapons now. Their power is with me. Mm. He then goes on to warn uh, Raphael and says, if you don't back, uh, if you don't want to die tonight, back off. And then Raphael disappears. Um, Balthazar then says, well, Cass, now you've got, you have your sword. Try not to die on it. And he then disappears. Cass then walks over to Sam and Dean and like zaps them back to Bobby's house, mm-hmm. um, at which the window is still broken. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's like no time has passed no, here. Yeah. Crazy. Because it's been through probably like two days, right? Yeah. How old are they anymore? Does it even matter? Do they still celebrate their birthdays on the same day? Like, it's... <laughs> Maybe. Well, I mean, this doesn't really make sense because Virgil shows up the next day in in TV land. Yeah. So why isn't Bobby like freaking out? Like, where are they? It could have been even a few seconds though. Like maybe he went through like but time. But Balthazar needed time to find the weapons. So time has passed. Yeah. I was going to say time dilation or something, but like, no, you're right. Time has passed. Uh, Bobby's just been gone like a real long time. It took, it, it, the liquor he store was to... closed. So uh, he had to yeah. go to the next state uh, to get the really good stuff that Dean wanted. <laughs> or he went to get cigarettes and never came home. <laughs> it's what I thought, to be fair, when they first said that he'd gone out to like the, the liquor store or whatever, I was like, oh yeah, that's that's been away from home a few days. <laughs> I mean, he, he could he could have gone off and like try to, yeah, try to, um, you know, get Rufus on board and like trying to do so, like something. At least board the window. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> oh, because it's, it's it's storming again too. Yeah. So, or okay, what hap- What if Cass took them back in time? Oh, so no time had passed, but time had passed. Look, it's just st- stop asking questions about it's TV logic. Time. Like you, you can solve <laughs> it. I do this every time. <laughs> every time I do this, I. I, I you may not realize this, but I actually have a bit of an obsession with time. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're okay, but you're right. It's the t- it's the TV that's wrong, not you. <laughs> yes, yes, I agree with this so much. Um, so Sam is rightfully annoyed. Yes. He's like, Cass, what the hell? Wait, uh, you were in on this diversion, and. This is where like some of the lines are kind of similar to what was being yeah. said earlier. Cause he's like, this is Balthazar's plan. Um, but I would have done the same thing. Mm-hmm. So Cass is getting rightfully annoyed at them. He's like, when will I be able to make you understand? If I lose against Raphael, we all lose everything. Dean says, we know the stakes, but they really don't. No, they don't. And then he asks Cass to explain what's going on. I don't like the fact that Cass just turns around and says, look, I'll explain when I can. Yeah. Because this is the time to come out with it all because they are now interested in what's happening. He can't tell like, them we've, we've been because t- he's been such a bad boy. <laughs> That's true. You're right. Yeah. He just needs them to do the bit that he yeah. needs them to do. He can't tell them the whole plan because, yeah, Cass has done, done messed up this season. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Too late. True, true, true. True, true, true. Mm. Uh, Dean then says, like, frickin' angels, because Cass disappears, obviously. Yeah. Sam walks away and, like, whacks on the wall. And I'm just like, what's so funny about this is, again, the meta of it all, yeah. because clearly it is it's a set. still set. <laughs> <laughs> but he's so relieved that it's real. And I'm just like, oh, but, like, it's not, though. <laughs> This is so foreshadowing, though, as well, of, like, Sam's arc for the rest of this season because he's going to go through a process that means he is constantly questioning what is real and what's not. And this can't have helped but to mess with him. Like... Yep. 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 You're right. Yeah. 
Um, Dean then says, Yeah, real moldy, termite eaten home sweet home. <laughs> Chock full of crap that want to skin you. Oh, and uh, we're broke again. And Sam just says, Yeah, but hey, at least we're talking. Aww. And then the episode ends. Which. What? <laughs> like, why are they bringing that part back with them? <laughs> I mean, kind of true, though. Like, I feel like emotionally they're on the same, more on the same page than they have been for, like, pretty much almost the whole time in Supernatural at the moment. Share trauma. Yeah, Share trauma. it's the share trauma. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, yeah, they're kind of, like, they're just, they're just vibing. Nothing's really happening. They're kind of, kind of aware that something might be going on in the background with Cass, but, like, who cares? Sam's got his soul back in there. Everything's fine and dandy in the world, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, to be fair, I was going to say, like, Cass saying... And they're not Cass saying. Dean's saying, yeah, Cass, we know the stakes. You've told us all about it. No, that's not true. Like... Not, no. not that the cast hasn't told them, but like also like when have they listened or do they know anything that's going on? Yeah. It's so stupid. Anyway, that that bit annoys me. But anyway, otherwise, yeah, and like especially since like, I mean, Cass has alluded to like Raphael in in the recap. Um, I I didn't mention this just because it's super super long, but like, um, it does show when Cass was saying that like Raphael wants to restart the apocalypse. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like. That is the only thing that, that's the only stakes that, I say stakes mm-hmm. in quotation marks, that Dean is concerned about. Like, he's not really concerned about anything else. No. And like, as far as I know, it doesn't really involve them anymore. That sounds awful, but like, my yeah, Andy's right. her in the cage, so like, who are they going to be vessels for? Like, we're fine. They're sort of twirling their hair, like, ha ha ha. Mm-hmm. We, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Looks, yeah. It's, it's an interesting one. I'm looking forward to the next few episodes about that bit, but. Well, so the next few episodes, we switch back over to the Eve stuff. Oh, we do. I'm kind of over Eve. I know purgatory is important, but like, I'm kind of over Eve already, and we haven't even seen her yet. Mm. More heaven, angel, civil war, please. Well, we get like several seasons of that, so calm down. I know they're kind of interconnected. <laughs> they are kind of interconnected. But like, <laughs> Um, yeah, I would be remiss to my Destio enjoyers if I didn't point out the line that Balthasar says here that, like, I didn't point out the meta of this. This is def- this is from Tumblr. Like, many people have, have vlogged this. But um, you'll, you'll enjoy this, Annabelle, because it's, it's so, like, it's so, like, you just have to know so much about Destio to, to understand this line. Obviously, Dean is Michael mm-hmm. Sword, right? Right. And, like... Mm-hmm. Everyone knows that Dean and Cass are banging. So <laughs> mm-hmm. Balthasar says, well, Cass, now that you have your sword, try not to die by it. But Dean, yep. Dean always causes Cass's death pretty much. Always, always pretty much. Yep. Mm-hmm. In some way mm-hmm. or another. Anyway, that's a fun Destiel line that people like to, to point out. I quite like it. I don't think it was intended to be read, read that way in the show. <laughs> no i don't think so either but if you if you were writing it in, in like a novelization that'd be really cool like you know to, to that's not what i meant to say for that like if you if you had if they had intended for destiel to be canon yes you could like that's like, something like that but i still don't think they did mm-hmm. yeah and I, I mean obviously this is this is in reference to having all the like weapons with her that's yeah obviously also we're currently in what <laughs> i call like, like the kind of pre-relationship era of dean and Cass. i i don't know i don't necessarily think they like hooked up yet i think this is like they are fighting <laughs> no 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 this this is we had a one night stand yes. but we don't know how to do deal with this yeah you're so right. You're yeah. so right. You're so right. Yeah. And like they're kind of fighting now yeah. because they like they don't know how to deal with each other and it's kind of awkward. But there's that like mm-hmm. underlying like sexual tension. So so true. Yep. So so right of you. Yep. That's. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like I've been. No, I've never been in this situation. But... <sighs> so um there is also a deleted scene but we won't go through that in this episode because this episode is already quite long yep. um we will probably go through this in our wrap-up episode mm-hmm. when we do that at the end of the season um when we talk about all the other deleted stuff and yeah. the gag reel and all that yeah absolutely i think that sounds good cool 
I really enjoyed this. This is really fun. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Like you, you can tell by the tone of this episode that this is just one that we really enjoy. Because obviously I've been editing the last ones and we're just so unhappy. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So unhappy happy with our slog through them. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell because I've been smiling this whole episode. I really do think you can tell when people are smiling while they're recording. And like, I think yeah. this is one yeah. that we're like laughing through the whole thing. And yeah, it was worth getting to this point. Season six has been a slog, I will say. Um, but I feel yeah. like we're we're getting we're getting to the back end of season six where it actually gets good now. Yeah, I think so too. And like, because obviously they have to pad for time and put the fillers mm-hmm. in and do this and that. And now we're getting to like, we're starting to like pull the threads together to make a string. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To wrap it all up. Um, but there's still going to be some frayed bits here. And there, hey. Because we're not at the end yet. Nice metaphor. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Me too. It was good. Yeah, my brain actually worked for once. Um, so, yeah. Uh, so I was actually wrong. It's not Frontierland next episode. I was going to say tomorrow, but we're, no, we're not doing <laughs> daily episodes. God, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we would have got through the series in a year if we did daily episodes, but I don't think yeah. anybody, I don't think anybody needs Nobody that. Nobody needs it. Nobody needs nope. that. <laughs> you think you might want it, but you don't. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, so the next episode is And Then There Were None. Oh. Oh. Uh, so, but we are we are back with Eve. Yeah. And we are back with the whole crew. And I think this is the episode that everybody gets killed off. Yeah. And that makes me upset. Oh, yeah. You don't like this episode. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, oh, no. This, this is the sad. It is. Ugh. It's all because of freaking slug. Well, because of a little slug. Little little worm slug. Yeah. Worm slug. <laughs> <laughs> I meant to say ears. Just saying slug. words now. <laughs> ear slug. Yeah. Con yeah. worm. This, well, this one has the Star Trek references in. Yeah. I'm enjoying Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. I think I have nothing else to say. I mean, we could, we probably could talk about this for like a lot longer, but I think yeah, I've got everything that I wanted to say. Let me just check. I think I got everything. Okay. Yeah, there were so many little details in this. I think I said at the beginning that like I wanted to go back and like look at the, the all the details on the screen and stuff. And like I did for some of them and some of them I didn't. And yeah, I feel like you could overanalyze this episode. Uh, so much. yeah i mean i think we kind of did yeah me too i think we do that with every episode <laughs> <laughs> that's our whole shtick <laughs> that is our whole shtick and this is you know this has been a long one yeah. um after our last few that have been pretty short so i'm not i'm not mad about it i'm not mad about it i enjoyed it you know what would be kind of fun mm. not to say that we we are going to do this but like to bring on because obviously we haven't had a, a guest on for a really long yeah, time so just because of scheduling it's just it's just not really possible at this time but like it'd be really fun to have jay or like charlie or um danny mm-hmm. come talk about this episode too just to get some other people's perspective just because it's such a fun episode that i wouldn't mind doing it again yeah i know what you mean <laughs> yeah i missed i have missed <laughs> having guests on our on the show yeah it's just due to scheduling because we're in two different time zones it's so hard um yeah. yeah and we have like we have such a specific time that it's not always going to work for everybody mm. but yeah no i do miss the guests so. i do yeah mm. that is yeah that is one more regret with this i feel like we should have someone else on for it but maybe we could do it again and we mm-hmm. when when life allows yeah yeah maybe once we finish the entire thing we pick out some episodes and have guests uh, no i'll never watch this again i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> <laughs> that, I know that's not true. I know that's not true. <laughs> isn't the whole point? is the whole point of this podcast that we're getting over supernatural? That's the whole point. Um, it, right. Yeah. We get over it so we can watch it without any having any feelings, <laughs> <laughs> and we can look at it as purely entertainment. That's my goal. <laughs> and this was the meta section of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yep. you're welcome Thanks. um okay cool at the end of the episode i'd like to thank jay um for his wonderful art um our 
look for our logo. I can't speak anymore. I'm, I'm, I've spoken so long. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, go check out his Tumblr because uh, at the it's at Pixel Agora because he did some really wonderful art, including like supernatural art too. So go drop a message and say like your art's really cool because that's a nice thing to do. Um, and because it is, yeah. Uh, if you want to come speak to us, we're on. Oh, and yeah, if you'd like to purchase that logo art, it's on Redbubble as well. So go and check that out. Um, if you want to come speak to us, we are on Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, Instagram, like all the places. We are Escaping Purgatory Podcast or just Escaping Podcast on Twitter. I was eventually moving over to Blue Sky and then I realized we couldn't schedule tweets. So um, that was really hard for me. <laughs> but I do still post on Blue Sky as well. Um, all the episode links, etc. So this week... We got teleported to a whole nother dimension <laughs> uh, where things were the same but completely different. Hopefully, next time we can find our way out. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> that was really bad. Oh.